Cyclone Olga drawing close to Karatha, Western Australia on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for April 9th. Across our tropics today we have just one cyclone active and it is the former very powerful cyclone Olga which has weakened all the way down to tropical storm status and barely holding on to that actually as we look around the world today. Elsewhere nothing active but there is one or two areas of interest. It's 52 days until hurricane season in the Atlantic, would you believe? And the tropics look rather quiet, but we have severe weather ongoing in southern in the southern United States, mainly across Texas and extending further eastwards today, an enhanced risk and a moderate risk in effect tomorrow. We'll be live to cover those. In the eastern Pacific, it's 35 days until hurricane season and it's still looking awfully quiet, with quite a few thunderstorms on the intertropical convergence zone well to the south of Mexico. A little bit of high cloud as well and light cloud near the Hawaiian Islands too at this point, but the tropics are quiet. The western Pacific also rather quiet, a few clouds there towards the east and a little disturbance well towards the equator, but the general tropical zone is very quiet indeed. North Indian Ocean also looking quiet uh, with a few little thunderstorms blowing up uh, between Indonesia and Sri Lanka. Cyclone Olga and an area of interest on the right hand side there uh, near Papua New Guinea, uh, but Olga is the main threat. Uh, and I say threat lightly because uh, it's not that much of a threat, but it will still produce some tropical storm force winds along the coast near uh, Karatha and Dampier. In the southwest Indian Ocean, things are looking generally rather quiet. A few thunderstorms blowing up around the Seychelles and off the northern tip of Madagascar, and a little bit extending towards uh, the coast of Mozambique and Tanzania as well. Uh, moving to the South Pacific, on the eastern side that is, east of the International Dateline, no areas of interest, but watch that little disturbance on the left hand side there. Some models are suggesting that could become a significant cyclone, uh, although probably not tropical. Let's check in on Olga then, this is what it's looking like right now. It's 325 kilometers from Dampier, 328 from Barrow Island, 336 from Caratha, 442 from Onslow and 508 from Exmouth. Its wind field is being skewed southeastwards and indeed some tropical storm force winds could arrive along the coast throughout the course of today and tomorrow. Uh, the Bureau of Meteorology aren't too concerned about it, they've not raised any watches or warnings for it and they think the system will absolutely, uh, will completely die off uh, within hours uh, and they might be right uh, but still those storm force winds will be felt. Well let's check the satellite imagery and this is what I'm talking about right now. There is Cyclone Olga looking very poor, being sheared uh, to everything by this point as we're entering darkness there uh, and the is that possibly the last bit of convection that's being completely axed away from the uh, center of the system well it may well be but that will be causing quite a bit of rainfall and some strong winds as that convective burst moves towards land there's a picture a neat picture of what it looked like earlier near its peak intensity just to remind everyone and didn't it look good? That's not even the peak actually. And here's some other imagery then. Dry air also uh, around there as you can see in those little lighter yellowish colors. Uh, but that big green burst there, that's the convective cloud top. There it is again on this other imagery being pushed southeastwards clearly by wind shear, uh, very powerful wind shear at that. And August days, even hours, look like they are numbered. Movement, by the way, appears to still be west-southwest. Some models suggesting that it could uh, turn just a little bit more towards the southwest and maybe even make landfall near Exmouth. This is radar right now, looking very rather messy there, but some uh, rainfall approaching the coast. Uh, the Karatha area had a little bit earlier on. Looks like they'll get a bigger burst later on this evening, so look out for that. Um, microwave imagery looks pretty good, though, to be honest. Uh, so the circulation is certainly still there. It's just the top of it being absolutely blown away. Here's a wider shot of the whole Australian region. On the right hand side you might see that little blow up that is that other potential system and here is a close up of it right now. Very small area of convection blowing up at the minute but it's humble beginnings. It is though expected to remain a small system and the chances of it becoming a significant storm are rather low. Uh, models suggesting that it might become a tropical depression. 
see surface temperatures looking good in the eastern Pacific and just about to lick up across the coast of Mexico there. Temperatures up to around 30 degrees, even higher in a few spots south of Guatemala, for instance. In the Atlantic, temperatures looking decent there as well, and they are rising, extending into the Gulf of Mexico now as well, and in the Bay of Campeche, and those temperatures getting quite high now, 28 to 30 degrees in a few spots. Western Pacific looking good, especially in those lower latitudes. Near Guam, it's around 28. Near the Philippines, western coast even, it's getting close to 30 degrees. In North Indian Ocean, it's piping hot. Look at those lower latitudes, over 30 degrees, pushing 32 in quite a few spots. And further north, those temperatures still a little bit of catching up to do, but the Bay of Bengal is looking pretty toasty. Very warm off the coast of northern Madagascar to the west there into the Mozambique Channel, 32 degrees there. The temperatures starting to cool a little bit now in the southwest Indian Ocean maybe. Uh, temperatures holding on around 28 uh, near Mauritius. Off the west coast of Australia where Olga is right now, temperatures around 29 degrees Celsius. And in the Bay of uh, Gulf of Carpentaria I should say, those temperatures still looking pretty high, 30 degrees. And in the Coral Sea still looking good there as well. South Pacific, very hot in those lower latitudes, around Fiji, 29 degrees, and around Samoa, pushing 31. And compared to average, these are what the anomalies look like. The oranges are above average, the blue zones are below average, and most of the tropical regions are indeed above. Indian Ocean, southwest, pretty good there as well. The Coral Sea, well above average right now, which could be fuel for that potential system. The Atlantic is certainly still trending above normal as well. The Eastern Pacific, not quite as much, especially in those higher latitudes, the subtropical zones. And this is the oceanic heat content, which still shows uh, lots and lots of energy in large parts of the South Pacific, usually in those lower latitudes, but the Coral Sea has a decent amount there as well. The North Pacific also looking decent. The East Pacific there might not look much to the untrained observer, but it's actually not far from the peak colours that we were seeing last season. So the Eastern Pacific is on its way, I feel. The Western Pacific also looking very good there. So let's check the GFS computer model then for the next five days and there is those storm force winds moving inland and it's very close to a landfall there near Exmouth and then it moves southwest and it really lose track of it actually uh, but it eventually completely dies off it looks like what happens to the center there it stalls just along that uh, peninsula there and then it eventually moves northwards if there's anything left of it uh, but whilst it's doing that it will probably produce a significant band to its south which will produce uh, strong winds maybe not so much heavy rain uh, so Certainly when we look at the rain charts, we're not expecting very much. And in the South Pacific, we just marked that other area there that we're watching, that 30% chance. And you can see there, it doesn't get very strong, maybe briefly tropical storm status. And then it eventually moves towards the Cape York Peninsula. And then look on the right hand side as we watch our net other system there. That's the other one we're looking at, but we haven't marked it because it doesn't look like it will become tropical, but it does become a rather robust system, eventually moving southwestwards initially towards New Zealand and then bending away. And then look at precipitation charts for the next seven days then. And this is what we're expecting for the Western Australian area. Pretty straightforward forecast. Yes, the rain forecast has gotten a little bit higher compared to previous forecasts that we did, uh, but not much. We're still only expecting one to two inches of rainfall up to 50 millimeters along the coast, maybe slightly higher than that near Caratha and Dampier. And then inland, southwards there, still getting up to 1.5 inches, sort of the Carnarvon area. Um, and that is over 30 to 40 millimeters. We've got no long range today, at least no medium range. So we'll go straight to the scan the barcode section and you can take a look at the Full City merch store. Um, and we have all of our products there as well and our full season and individual animations on request. Guess what? We're still waiting for Hone and this t-shirt isn't gonna get old, I don't think. When will that storm form? Well, we do have a little bit of action in the silly range, but really it's a half-hearted attempt at producing a train of storms from the GFS model there and on the South Pacific's behalf. Uh, two systems there that form west of Vanuatu and east of Fiji, uh, and they become brief tropical storms by the looks of things there, maybe even three systems actually, uh, but they don't get very deep, rather short-lived, and of course extremely long range, so I wouldn't be worrying about those just yet, but potentially a little bit of activity there towards the late part of the month. 
On this day, April 9th, 1968, we had Cyclone Noreen, which was a Category 1 in the South Indian Ocean, and we had Cyclone Gizelle, which was pummeling the northern coast of New Zealand as a Category 1 as well, most notable uh, for sinking the TEV Wahin, a uh, passenger ferry ship, killing 53. 57 were killed in total from Gizelle uh, along its track, which went from Vanuatu down towards New Zealand. And that's what happened on this day. Back to today then, and the first name on the Atlantic naming list this year will be Alberto. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Aletta, and in the Central Pacific, it is still Hone. If you're not familiar with the running joke, it is a running joke, because we've been waiting nearly five years for it to form, and it felt like it wouldn't be that long. We thought we'd be waiting like months, but it's five years now. Nearly. In the Western Pacific, Awinya is the next name. In the North Indian Ocean, it's Rimal. We're at 14 storms so far this year. 92 is the average. We are running a below behind schedule at the moment. About 30% behind schedule, as a matter of fact, this year. Olga, though, really uh, put that up. That was a Category 4. The next name in the Australian region is Paul. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, it's Hidaya. And in the South Pacific, it's Peter. That's all from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back with normal service tomorrow.